Hi, I'm Daniel Stevens, the Associate Director of the Scholars Initiative here at the Museum of the Bible. Usually I'm working with early Christian texts and New Testaments, but today there's nobody here. And so I guess that makes me the lonesome curator. So today, the object that we have is called Codex Climici Rescriptus. This is just one folio of it. It's, it's a whole book. It's just one, one bit that shows you some of the unique qualities of this work. Now, the name itself tells you several things about it. First, it's a codex. That is, its form is what we would call nowadays a book with pages folded together and stitched. It's the second word, climici, is a little bit less obvious. This is from the person whose works are contained in this text. John, the, the abbot of the St. Catherine's Monastery in the Sinai, often is known as John Climacus. He's called this because his major work that he wrote is called the Ladder, or the Ladder of Divine Ascent. Ladder, in Greek, climax, and so he is called John Climacus, John of the Ladder. Then move that Greek name into Latin, and you get this climici, so of climicus. And the last word, rescriptus, tells us that it was rewritten. This is a type of text called a palimpsest, which means the sheets used in it, these parchment pages that have writing on them, initially had something else written. They were all scratched off and treated, and then once they were made blank again, new work could be written. So in this text, in Codex Climici Rescriptus, we have two works in Syriac, so it's a Syriac translation of John, John Climacus, on, on the top. One is that famous work, The Ladder of Divine Ascent, and the second is a smaller work called To the Pastor, on, on pastoral care. These are in Syriac, uh, a version of Aramaic. But if you look closely at this page, you can see that there's something under it. You can see letters beginning to poke through. And odds are, when this was initially prepared for John Climacus's writings, you couldn't have seen them. When they were scratched off, all the visible ink would have been scratched and the pages would have been treated. But it would have probably left these chemical traces in the parchment itself. And as they age, what happens is they, those begin to become a little bit more visible. But still, we can only see bits and pieces. Here at the Museum of the Bible, we currently have two research projects on this manuscript. One of them is making an edited text of the Syriac uh, works of John Climacus. So just working on the top, working on the layer that is clearly seen, and trying to make an addition for scholars to use of that text. The other work is aimed at trying to figure out what those bottom texts say. As far as we can tell, this one book was initially made out of scraps of around 10 other books in at least two languages that have been scratched off and are only partially visible. So the way that we're trying to get to that text is through a technology called multispectral imaging. White light has a full spectra, or spectrum rather, of visible light within it, plus, plus a couple other wavelengths. What we do in multispectral imaging is we shine one color at a time, one specific range of wavelengths at a time, from red all the way to violet, getting images of the color absorbance and reflection of the text. We also take pictures in infrared and in ultraviolet. Then, through computer software and technicians, we begin playing with composite images to bring out the bottom text. And through this technology, we can begin to make these hidden letters, these letters that have been covered over for centuries, begin to shine. And when we do that, we can read and we can find Greek, and we can find Aramaic, and all sorts of different texts, some biblical, some not, some pictures, some words, and just all sorts of things in this one manuscript. Another interesting feature about this manuscript is how or where it was found. So it was found in St. Catherine's Mon or found, is, is, it was never really lost, it was made known to the Western world, um, by, at St. Catherine's Monastery by two sisters who were going and exploring, looking for manuscripts. So this manuscript was acquired by Agnes Smith Lewis and Margaret Dunlop Gibson, different last names despite being twins because of marriage. And when they acquired this manuscript, which was probably written in the 9th or 10th century, and 
the, in which the initial pages come from either the 5th or most likely the 6th century. They then brought it back to Cambridge in the UK, where it was then donated to one of the theological colleges there, Westminster, um, from which it came to the museum. And so this is a wonderful piece of just a whole collection of history held in this, this monastery, which has the oldest continuing library in the world, brought to uh, Great Britain at the time, and then brought to us. And hopefully, once the museum is open again, you could come and see it, and you can also go and look at some of the pages of this on our website.